Okay, just working away here, and I wanted to show you this is what the control board looks like. And I decided to make these flat. They, I was twisting them together similar to this, which works, and you can do it this way, but this spacer here, I, I made it smaller and I made it flatter, and it's easier to solder by doing it this way. So what you're doing here is I made a little small jig. And if you can see there, it's got a hole that's just big enough to slide this inside of, twist that together. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So when you get your uh, diodes, they usually come like this. It makes it a lot easier. Um, I cut them into six each. So I'll peel the bottom off of it. And try not to bend them all up like that. And you pull the bottom off like that. You slide this in and you can see how they how they fit in there like that. I kind of bend it up a little bit. But it really doesn't matter. Um, you put it in like that and then what you do is you, you're going to put those together. You're not going to twist them because you don't want it to be larger than the size of the diode. You want it to lay flat. So you're just squeezing them together like that and then what I've been doing is taking a small piece of uh, solder like this, holding it here, and then just twisting it like this. It don't matter, we're going to melt it in a minute. But what you're doing here is you're holding those together temporarily until they're, that's turned into solder. And it's, it allows you to square it up like that. And then when you take your soldering gun, you're just heating this up and you're able to just go straight down like that and come up with a nice even flow of the solder. And then you do that on the other side and you end up with this. And this is the way I'm, I'm doing all these now. It, it's easier, it makes it easier when you go to solder these on. They're not sticking up similar to these. This is a real pain to solder down. This was a breeze. So that's the way you create the little diode sets. So the other thing here is that what I'm doing here is taking these strips like this. And uh, those, those are a little more expensive than you can get them online for, but that's local. So. Um, and what you need is you need 10. You need three, six, nine for the chips, and then one for this bottom uh, connector. And, and you want to do it that way because you're going to be able to change out the resistance pack and add a variac, or, or a variac, a rheostat, if you would like to run a test on it, you could add a rheostat right here and that would allow you to run that coil and adjust the resistance level like a Bedini circuit. When it's on the large uh, motor you're going to use a variac to control the voltage and all you want all your resistance to be equal uh, at that stage. But basically we're cutting out these little holes and then we're gluing those together like this so you can see I'm using the chip as a holder so basically I put it together like this and I'm putting these sets together and then putting the diode across the bottom like this and then I can basically put this thing together fairly quickly by pre-staging these parts so I, I took these and uh, cut them on a bandsaw and then I ground the I ground the side off as you can see you don't want it sticking up real big there you know you want it as flush as possible or else uh, your 
chips aren't going to fit in there that easy. So that's what's on the agenda. Um, I hope to get these coils finished and then everything else should go fairly quickly. Um, this is just a progress up update um, for the large and small box motor. This is Technomancer for Zero Point Fuel, signing out.